perception is that we are thinking one thing and we feel something else strongly and we don't monitor our body language and you're picking up some of the cues and it leaks out his stronger emotion. It doesn't match what he's saying. That doesn't mean he did it. Doesn't mean he's guilty, but he's not being really honest about what he really feels. So when we're watching this, because this is the kind of thing we could use when we are talking to our friends, mm -hmm. when we're talking to our bosses or whatever, we could watch for these signs to see right. if they're being deceptive. What should we watch for here to, to notice that he doesn't believe himself? What do we usually do when you say no? You, you go, say, no. You, you say no. 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 Watch how he says no. Okay, watch that. To those of you who may want to ask, let me address very directly, I did not kill my daughter, John Bonet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you catch that? What did you see? He was nodding up and down here saying that. Did you see he's that? Nodding up and down. Yeah. Everybody's going, he's nodding up and down. Nodding up and down, down when yeah, it yeah. should be no. <laughs> and it's surprising, somebody caught the, the, the smirk. Who said the smirk? Who smirk? Who was he was smirking. <laughs> And what do you That's think right. that meant, though? I mean, the smirk to me, I mean, that you could smirk. He wasn't taking it very seriously. He was just kind of... There you go. Yeah, there I didn't go. kill her. It, it's this pleasure. You get this little smirk on the side of the face. It's like I'm pleased with my performance. Like That's he right. thinks he's pulling one off on he's him. He's doing a good job. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're looking at some famous cases and celebrities and all sorts of things. And what we need to think about is that we can use this when we are having mm -hmm. everyday contact with people because people, ever, on the average, lie about seven times a day. I'd hate to be the kid to some of these moms. They're picking this up good. <laughs> <They're> good. <laughs> They're doing a good job. Now, this one is an interesting one. Barbara Walters does those 10 most fascinating people interviews, mm -hmm. you know, the shows every year. And I remember very strongly this interview she did with Courtney Love. So when we watch this now, we watch for the head moving mm -hmm. and, and the voice. Cells. Yeah, and when you get that, no. Oh, so if the voice goes too high or like too low. Like somebody went, and, yeah, and the pitch changed dramatically. Her energy, stress energy level jumped up. So it's a very stressful question for her. So if I was the interviewer, I'd dig some more in that area, which Barbara kept doing. You were on nothing? No. You were on nothing today? No. No. No heroin. My God. Oh, my God, believe me. What's this mean? This believe me. Well, so what's Across wrong with believe my heart. me? Does that, so maybe she's saying believe me because I'm telling you the truth. So we don't believe the rest of it? Oh, well, I so believe this moment now, not the rest of them. Oh, so it, this is to emphasize because this is part of the performance. Uh, yeah, I need to believe. I need you to believe this. You don't believe this, my whole house of cards is going to collapse. Okay. Explain to people what you've done for a living that makes you an expert on detecting lies. The last 18 years, I've been teaching to law enforcement on criminal justice agencies, correction agencies all over the United States in North America, how to spot when their victims, the witnesses, and their suspects are not telling the truth about any particular incident that they're investigating. And people can extrapolate this and, and put this into everyday practice in real life. That's what I found. That it, a lot of these things shouldn't be just shared with law enforcement, but what about your kids if they're you know, not telling the truth about the party they're going to, if they borrowed the car over the weekend when they weren't supposed to go someplace, and just how to enrich the relationship, get a little better quality communication between ourselves and our friends and family members. Now, everybody lies at some point in different True. ways, every day, little mm -hmm. lies. Now, what's your definition of that little lie that really doesn't matter? Those just kind of keep society together. That's where we don't want to hurt feelings. Uh, how do you like this dress? Now, that's a dress. <laughs> you know, we just don't want to try tell them that that one looked better on Soapy Sales when he was out. It, we don't want to hurt the person's feelings. Those we just kind of keep together. The ones that we worry about or the ones where the person does for his own gain, or his own uh, aggrandizement, or to harm the other person. That's the ones we're concerned about. And where do pathological liars fit into this scheme? Pathological liars are the ultimate users. They ultimately abuse everyone. They have no empathy for their condition. They have no concern about how they're going to feel. And it's purely just for what they want to gain, purely ego-driven. And they have no guilt or emotion about the fact they are deceiving or using someone. Are they more difficult to t detect than people who are just lying off the cuff? They give the same signals, but the advantage, I guess you say, to a pathological liar is they're typically very outgoing. They're very friendly, they're very engaging, and we wind up overlooking the symptoms that they are generally generating for us. We dismiss them because they're so nice. Well, in your books, one of the, the most important pieces of information is that a lot of the things we're told about liars are really fallacies. Mm -hmm. You're saying that the whole eye contact thing, not it's true. Not very good. We miss about 50% of the lies that happen in front of us. People are generally very bad at it. We look for the wrong symptoms, like you said, eye contact, or he's fidgeting a lot, or he's ah or um and la. Well, if that was the case, uh, we'd all be guilty of something. Just because you're nervous doesn't mean the boss's body's in the car, in the parking lot, you know, in the trunk of your car. It's just a case of nerves. So we have to learn to distort between reliable symptoms and those that are just signs of nervousness. And which are more reliable, the verbal cues or the nonverbal cues? 
uh, about an equal amount. Really? There's just fewer of uh, verbal cues. They don't happen as often. When they happen, they're usually very, very valuable because people monitor their speech. They very carefully listen and pay attention to what they're saying. Body language they don't pay attention to, which has good news and bad news. If you don't monitor it, there's lots and lots of it. The bad news is there's lots and lots of it. And it's hard to pick out what's just stress and what's a lie sign. Should you ever confront a liar? It depends on how you want to handle the, mm -hmm. the lie. If you want to play one-upmanship, if you want to play gotcha games and get in the truth, you're not going to keep very many friends. You can, you can do it with compassion, you can do it with sincerity, and with concern. Say, look, I think we can work this out. I think there's more details we need here to, to straighten out this difference between us. But you don't have to destroy the person to do it. All right, Stan Walters, good information this morning. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for joining My us. My pleasure.